Melissa, thank you so much for coming back on the channel. Today, we are going to be talking about scrapbook and photograph, kind of archiving them. And so this whole thing kind of got started with a viewer question on the Genealogy TV YouTube channel from a gal named Kay. And she said, Hi, I enjoy your videos and I've learned a lot from them. Thank you, Kay. I appreciate that. I am in the process of archiving documents and items. I have found conflicting information on how to handle old photographs, albums, and scrapbooks. I was wondering how you would approach this. Do you keep them intact after taking pictures of them? How do you store them? And do you put paper between each pages or do you take them apart and put the pictures and items in archive safe new albums or scrapbooks. And so she goes on, if you could <laughs> mention this or do a video, I'd appreciate it. Thanks, Kay, for the question. So what better way than to bring the archive lady on to help answer these questions? Maybe we break them apart and answer them one at a time. But for those of you are, who are not familiar with Melissa, she's the go-to person when it comes to archiving our genealogical material. So after all of that, me rattling on. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Connie. I'm glad to be here. So tell us exactly, you have a history of doing this archive stuff. Give us a little bit of your background, where you are now. Uh, certainly. I've been doing genealogy research for the past 33 years. I've been a professional genealogist since 2004. Um, I used to take clients. I took clients for almost 19 years and decided a year ago to stop taking clients, but I'm still speaking and teaching. I've been an archivist for the past 11 years at the Houston County, Tennessee Archives and Museum. And so if you're ever in the middle Tennessee area, please stop by and see me. Awesome. Thank you. So tell me, let's see if we break this apart. And she says with her scrapbooks, do you keep them intact? after taking pic pictures of them, or do you break them apart? What what say you, Miss Melissa? <laughs> First of all, well, she's talking about two different things. She's talking about photo albums, and she's talking about scrapbooks. And those are two different animals. And we treat them differently in the archives. Okay. Let's talk about scrapbooks. One thing you need to remember about scrapbooks is they were put together by individuals. And so they're going to be, each one is going to be unique and individual. And we like to keep them together. Because okay. it may be that they put that scrapbook together in a particular way, such as chronologically in order, or some other way that they have devised that they want to keep it that way. So as your questioner says, yes, we want to digitize. Um, I believe that digitization is the highest form of records preservation because if something were to happen to the original, you would at least have the digital copy. So yes, we want to digitize. And when you're digitizing a scrapbook, you want to digitize in order of the scrapbook. And you also want to digitize any blank pages. Don't skip those blank pages. I don't know if you've ever looked at microfilm where they have microfilm records. They always include the blank pages. Why is that? Because it, it keeps the integrity of the record book together. Okay. It shows you the entire record book. The left, the right, the left, the Correct. right, the left, the Correct. right. Yeah. Every okay. single page. We don't yeah. leave anything out. Yeah, okay. If you have a scrapbook that has, let's say, documents on top of each other or a folded, like a greeting card or a letter or something, mm -hmm. you want to digitize that with it just like it is, open it up, digitize it again so that you can get the information. That's a After tip right there. Yes. So for people at home who have come across microfilm where maybe there's a piece of paper over some of the information, Go to the next image because they may have lifted up that piece of paper. I can't tell you how many times that's happened where people think, well, they've, they've blocked out some of that information. No, they may not have. Go to the next image. So thank you for reminding us about that. Absolutely. And any good microfilm person will do that. So after you've digitized your scrapbook, we're going to still keep it intact. I would suggest that you put archival tissue paper in between each page. This okay. way, if it is exposed to moisture, none of the ink will bleed. None of the photographs will stick to each other. So yes, we want to put a sheet of archival tissue paper in between the pages. And then you're going to store it in an archival box. And in that archival box, you do not want it to be moving around. So you may have to crumple up some more of that archival tissue paper and put around, you know. And then most importantly, you want to store in a cool, dark, dry place. 
Not in the the attic. (laughs) No, not in the attic, not in your basement, not in the outbuilding. Yeah. Somewhere where the humidity is low, temperature is low, but where the humidity and temperatures are consistent. We talk about low temperatures and low humidities all the time, but really the most important part is that they're consistent. If you have a storage area where it gets hot parts of the year and cold parts of the year, you don't want that. That fluctuation can really damage. So once you've done that, you're good to go with scrapbooks. I, I think you once told me if you're comfortable, your materials will be comfortable right? (laughs) Absolutely. And you know, when you go to a library or an archive, how many of you have to take your sweaters? It's because we keep our temperatures as low as we possibly can, cooler the better. Yeah. So that's what I would say about scrapbooks. What about scrapbooks that are in plastic sleeves? So do you, do you recommend taking that image out, the page out to digitize it and then put it back in, change the page, pull it out? Because, you know, that plastic can be reflective. Absolutely. And what I just described to you is more along the lines of those paper scrapbooks that are really old. Mm -hmm. Now, as we come into the more modern era, we see scrapbooks where it is plastic pages. Those are normally not archival. So then we move into removing from those pages the items. But you have to be very careful because you want to keep them in the same order. One of the first principles of archiving records is original order. And so we want to keep those in the same order. You can, I would suggest you get archival file folders or you can get archival sleeves and put those right in there, but keep them in the same order. Good to know. Thank you. Okay. So what about images now? So if you have like, say, loose images, Obviously, we're going to try and digitize those as well. If you've got a box full of old images, what are we going to do with those? You're going to treat them very carefully. You're going to wear gloves. Right. I'm asked all the time, do I wear gloves or not wear gloves? We don't wear gloves with anything except when we're handling photographs. So I encourage people to get a pair of gloves. You can get the old-fashioned white cotton gloves, but they tend to get dirty pretty easy. So get those nitrile gloves. Get the kind that don't have the powder. Because the powder inside of them is not archival. But use gloves when you're handling photographs because the images on photographs can absolutely be damaged by your oils and dirt on your hands, even if you have clean hands. So wear gloves. And then I suggest that you digitize those photographs in the box. Try to pair them with all the ones that are some, some from the same event, same era. If they're just thrown in a box, it's difficult to know what goes with what. Yeah. So, and... A tip that I have for you to not be overwhelmed with photographs. There are people out there that have boxes and boxes and boxes of photographs. This is what I tell people to do. Open your box, take out 10 photographs, and then close the box. (laughs) You're going to digitize those. You're going to identify those. All the things you are going to do to your photographs, get them in their sleeves, and they're done. And then you can open your box and do 10 more. That helps you from getting completely overwhelmed, which means you won't do the project. Great tip. Great idea. Great idea. So those images then, are you putting those into individual envelopes, individual sleeves, individual file folders, whatever works for the image? You can do one of two ways. And of course, we all have photographs that are all different kinds of shapes and sizes. But you can buy photograph sleeves and they come in very tiny, small sizes up to extremely large sizes. So you would want to put them in an archival sleeve or you can put them in an archival envelope. But they also have archival photograph albums that you can get. So any of those would be fine. If you put them in sleeves, then you'll have to either store them in archival file folders or in archival boxes. But photo albums... They have archival photo albums that you can use. Well, the only other question that I have, and this is not from Kay, this is from me. And I've done a couple of videos on how to archive videos and film footage. But what are you guys doing over there for if something should come in, you know, that's really old video or old film? What? How do you store it? Let's talk about like slides and negatives. Okay. (laughs) Because I'm actually working on a slide project right now. All right. We have several thousand slides from our 4-H, our local 4-H group and our local extension group. And so this is like beef shows and 4-H shows and 
home demonstration. So I'm scanning slides, lots of slides. What are you um, using they, to scan those slides with? We are, I'm using an, an Epson scanner that has an attachment you put on there and it scans floors, four slides at a time. Oh, nice. Yes, and it's wonderful. The Epson, I, I highly recommend the Epson scanners. We have an Epson V600 that we're using for these slides and it also will do the negatives. Is this just a scanner like you would have at home, like a printer scanner all in one unit with a slide attachment? Absolutely. This is a flatbed scanner. Okay. They're very inexpensive, not all that expensive. So any home archivist can actually do this. Good to know. Then, yeah, then once you have it scanned, there are, are the archival stores have boxes for slides. They have envelopes for negatives. So you'll need to get those. They're archival and you can store them in that. Awesome. What did we miss? We missed photo albums, especially those black paper photo albums. Okay, yes. I forgot and, about that. And the magnetic albums that archivists love to hate. <laughs> those kind with the picture their sticks to the back. Oh, yes. 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 All right. Let's talk about those. Sure. The black paper albums are from the 1920s and 30s or even later. We encourage people to not remove those photographs from those albums. Now, are these Reason the ones you're talking about have the little corners on the little pic on the pictures? They could have um, corners black. or they could just be pasted right onto the page. Okay. Yes. If they have corners, hopefully your ancestor did not paste them and you can just remove them from the corners. If that's the case, then we can remove them from the albums. Many of these albums, though, they use paste and they pasted those things right down on that paper. And it is almost impossible to get off of there. So I would encourage you not to try that because you will tear your photographs. And I know that the genealogists are thinking, but there's writing underneath there. I know there's writing underneath there. I want to see it. You can reach out to a photographer or a paper conservator. They can get those off, but it's going to be very costly. But leave them, digitize them. And then put that archival tissue paper in between the pages and store like I talked about in a box. Okay. Now, those magnetic ones that are from the 60s and 70s. We want I to do get remember rid of them. those. <laughs> we want to get rid of those. So in this case, I give you full permission to remove the photographs from these albums. Again, keeping the photographs in the order that they are in the albums, because there may be a reason why they're in that particular right. order. There are some of those sticky albums out there that the sticky is so sticky, it is very difficult to get the photographs off. So I have two tips for you. You can get dental floss, the unwaxed, unflavored kind. That's a great idea. Yeah. And you're going to run the dental floss in between the photograph and the page, and hopefully they'll come off. I can yes. just see. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that is a great tip. All right. And I, if you try that and it is just really giving you a lot of resistance and it's just not coming off, here is my second tip. All right. Take the, take the entire album or you can actually take the album apart by page, stick them in the freezer and then freeze them for 30 to 45 minutes. Remove them from the freezer and see if those photographs will not pop off. A lot of times the glue will freeze to the point that you can remove the photographs. Interesting. Interesting. If those two Tip. tips don't work, leave them alone. Well, you leave are them in the album. A wealth of gee whiz information. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, what we do got? here in the archives. That's what we do here in the archives. Yeah. Awesome. Well, anything else you want to share with us? Other than just make sure and store them properly. And the other thing I would share, and this is not exactly on a mini list for everything. Please plan on where you're going to send your genealogical materials before you're no longer with us. That's one of the things that we battle all the time in the archives is we hear stories of children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews throwing stuff away because they weren't interested in it. They didn't know what it was. Plan now. In fact, I encourage genealogists to go ahead and start donating now. It's difficult to let go of these original documents, photographs, and artifacts but they may get tossed. And so okay. if you can't let them go, at least let an archive digitize them. Such a great tip. Yes, thank you. Well, I really appreciate you coming on today. And where can people find you 
if they want to find you. And you also have some of these tips in a blog post, I understand. So for those at home, she's going to share a couple links with me that I will put in the description box on the video so that we can get you those further information in a blog post. But where can they find you if they need to get a hold of you? Uh, sure. My blog is A Genealogist in the Archives. And I'm also on Facebook. Just search for The Archive Lady. And then if anyone wants to reach out and send me an email with another question, I'll give you my email address to put there in the notes. Okay. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Connie. It was great being with you. All right. I just uh, one more thing. I want to remind everybody, if you found value in this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you're subscribed. It really does help the channel grow. And we can get Melissa back on here again real soon. Thank you so much for watching.